CLI on a cross-platform IDE for C and C++. Download now. Yeah, my name's Paul Grenier. I work for Haven. Yes, that's the holiday people. It is a fantastic place to work. And I really enjoy the team that I've got there. Okay, I'm not an expert. I haven't been to team leader school. There's no such thing as team leader school. And I haven't got loads and loads of years of team leading, but as you'll see in a minute, um, this is some experience I've got and I want to share it. So there's a little, little bit more about me here. Um, I'm a husband and a father foremost. My wife told me I had to put that at the top, which reminds me I've got five jokes in here. That was the first one. If you can keep laughing, that would be amazing. Um, I've been a software, year, software engineer for a very long time. Um, professionally for the last uh, 25 years, former business owner, team lead, which is what you'd hope. Um, and I've been uh, a founder of Sync Norwich and Norfolk Developers, who are, which are groups which are similar to the ACCU, but in, in Norwich where I, where I live. Um, I'm a heavy metal fan, science fiction fan, Formula One fan. So you've got all the cliches, all the stereotypes there. Um, and I'm a reluctant cyclist. And the reason I'm, reason I'm a reluctant cyclist is I'm nearly 50 and I don't want to have a heart attack. So I'm that's six jokes, brilliant. Thanks for the giggle there, that's brilliant. If you do want to follow me on Strava, be quick, because I'm, uh, I'm about to move on. Right, so why am I speaking about team leading? There's, when I joined Haven about three and a half years ago, it was the first time that I'd worked with other team leads. I'd always been the only team lead in the companies where I was a team lead. And I found that incredibly intimidating. And imposter syndrome was, was, was rife with me. Uh, and I really struggled. But I had an incredible boss, they called them leaders at Haven, who really encouraged me to get better at team leading. And I, I started to get more confidence. And now I tell them that they're all wrong, obviously. Um, but the turning point for me was when a colleague of mine uh, decided that he wanted to leave and go and be a, a team lead somewhere else. He's since come back as it happens, but me being me, ego the size of a planet usually, I decided that I'd give him some advice. And off the top of my head, these are the things that I, gave, uh, that I, um, I said to him. So doing the work isn't the only way to add value. We'll talk about all of these in, in detail in a minute. Remember to delegate, pick your battles and talk to your team every day. So what is team leading? So... Um, I talked to uh, I, oh, I talked to my wife. I talked to other team leads. I talked to lots of different people about what team leading was. I even tried the Oxford English Dictionary and ChatGPT. Um, but my colleagues were the people who gave me the most the most help when um, trying to uh, work out what a team lead was. And and Robin, who's a, another team leader, Haven said, "But it's not for the faint-hearted." With the experience I had when I first started, I think it's definitely not for the faint-hearted. And it's a lot easier with clear, unchanging sets of requirements. I think as software engineers, we'd all like clear, unchanging sets of requirements, but it's not really how the world works. And, and uh, Lauren, he's, um, he's, uh, he's our head of infrastructure, and he told me that um, team leading is being able to uh, see through ChatGPT's imperious tone. Well, I didn't know what imperious meant, so I went and looked it up. Um, and I've, if I've taken that out of my notes, which isn't helpful, but basically it means that you're a bit, you're a bit arrogant in the way that you talk to people, ar arrogant and demeaning. So I didn't feel ChatGPT was that before, but I certainly feel it is now. But I really like that Laurent was keen that his part of, of being a team leader was about um, encouraging his team members to thrive. Uh, and this is Will. So Will used to be a senior um, engineer on the last team I was on when I was team lead. And um, he's now leading the team that I was leading before. And he said that team leading is taking all the good things from the good leaders and not taking the bad things from the bad leaders. So I'm hoping that I'm not the bad leaders that he's referring to. Um, but yeah, that's, again, it's important to learn from other people. But the one thing that everybody agreed on, and I agree, agree with very much, is that team leading is hard. So I talked to all these different people, as I said, the Oxford English Dictionary, ChatGPT, all sorts of other places, and this is the definition that I came up with. And it's a team leader is someone who guides or influences a group of individuals who cooperate, coordinate their efforts to achieve a specific objective. That to me feels a lot like team leading. You're a group of people, you're a team, and you're moving in the same direction to achieve the same thing or things. So let me just remind you, we're going to talk about four aspects of team leading. The first one is talking to your team every day, and it's really important to get them to talk to each other as well. Would you mind while I just make my notes bigger because I'm struggling to read them? Right, so I truly believe um, that a, a team um, works better if they're happier. Sorry, what, uh, let me start that again. Um, I genuinely believe that a team gets on better when they're happier. Stay you, would you believe I changed the order on this just before when I was sitting in the audience and I'm now wishing I hadn't? Right. So teams that get on well are happier, stay together, trust each other, and most importantly, are more productive. Um, and there are lots of different ways that you can keep your team talking to each other, building rapport um, and, and getting on better. 
Um, and obviously we've got stand-ups. We'll talk a bit more about them in a moment. Everybody knows what a stand-up is. It's a waste that people talk about it, talk every day. Ours tend to be a bit longer than your standard Kent, Kent Beck stands, stand-ups because we have a lot of banter and a lot of chat as well. I imagine that a lot of people are, are the same. Uh, shared chats. I've used shared chats on the, my last two teams. Um, and pretty much anything goes. There are times when it gets a bit too close to what isn't safe for work, but everybody is encouraged to, to, um, to contribute and to talk to each other. And again, it builds rapport within the team. Um, and regular team socials, we do this about once a month. Um, it's normally a, a word-based game of some sort. Um, and I have lots of uh, non-native English speakers on my, um, on my team. And I thought they would shy away from these sorts of word games because some of them are nervous about using their English. But we found that everybody came along and everybody likes to, likes to get involved. Um, and sometimes we do these things in, in person as well. We went to London uh, in the summer to do some axe throwing, which is quite a lot of fun. But how do you start those conversations going? If you've got somebody new in your team or you're new to the team like I was to mine 18 months ago, how do you get those conversations going and start to build that rapport? One way is through one-to-ones. There's just one problem with one-to-ones. I hate them. And I hate them for two reasons. One is if I've got a problem, I'm far too impatient to wait up to a month for my next one-to-one -to, -one to discuss it with somebody. Or equally, if I've got praise to give to someone, I don't want to wait for their one-to-one. -one. But also it's a really intense period. It's just you and another person. And sometimes it can be really difficult to know what to talk about. And there aren't any hard or fast rules. The sensible thing to do is to, send, is to start off by working how they, uh, asking them how they are. Everybody will tell you how they are, even if it's a silent grunt, which is sometimes the case when the engineers aren't very happy. Um, and talk about their family. I had a particularly difficult engineer until I discovered that we both had autistic children and we got chatting about it one time and suddenly this rapport started to build. Um, but it doesn't really matter what you talk about, just make sure you talk. And then once you're, once you're talking like this, you don't need the one-to-ones anymore. I'm down to one one-to-one -one on my team of six at the moment, and that's because he's new. And I just want to keep, keep the conversation going. But now that I've built that rapport with them all, they come to me and, and I talk to them when I need to. So the one-to-ones are no longer necessary, which certainly makes me happier. Remember to delegate. So when you become a team lead, um, you stop being responsible for doing the work and you start to become accountable. I'll talk about that in a bit more detail in a minute. And when tasks will come your way, you need to ask yourself two questions. Can I do this? If the answer is no, you've got two choices. You can learn or you can give it to your, give it someone in your team, get them to learn and get them to then pass the knowledge on to the rest of the team. If the answer is yes, then you need to ask yourself the second question, which is, should I do this? And almost all the time, the answer should be no. Okay, especially when you're start learning to delegate, you should give everything to your team. But sometimes you just want to do it, okay? Sexy new feature, nice new um, technology that you want to work with, anything like that, sometimes you want to do it. And, and I maintain that in the first instance, you should always give um, tasks to your team. But as you start to learn how to delegate and what works and what doesn't, you can start to take some of those tasks for yourself. Um, and as I said earlier, it's important to understand the difference between accountability and responsibility. So your role changes, you become accountable to your team, to, you become accountable and your team becomes responsible. A team lead ensures that the right things get done while engineers do the work to make it happen. So basically, if my team don't build it the right way, and it goes into production and production goes bang, I'm then accountable for making sure that gets sorted out and I'm the one that has to go and talk to the bosses about why it went wrong. But I'm no longer responsible for doing the work every day. But while you're doing all this delegating, there's something you need and that's trust. So when I was building my first team back in the early noughties, um, we had a load of candidates who came to interview. I mean, I was very young and naive back then as well. And we had loads of people who came and they didn't live up to their CVs. So I started, asked, I started sending out a set of 10 questions and asked them all to fill them in before they came for interview. And I let their agent know to tell the candidate that if they couldn't explain those, the answers to those 10 questions in the first 10 minutes of the interview, I'd, I'd stop the interview. The, the result was that we invited fewer candidates for, um, uh, for interviews. The quality was much better and I only had to start, uh, stop one interview. And this meant that the questions I sent out meant I could build the trust that mine and the candidate's time wouldn't be wasted in um, in interview. And then a lot of the time you have to assume trust because you don't know the people well enough yet and you haven't had the opportunity to build that trust up. So trust has to be tested and maintained. And this, this is the fourth time I've given this talk. And this triangle of trust is something that came out of the previous three times I've given it. And the idea is that you make sure you communicate with your team. We've talked about stand-ups and the other ways of communicating, and that helps you build trust in the person. 
You need to then review their code on regular intervals as well, whether that be PRs, pair programming, however it's done. But you need to get a feel for the quality of their work. But the engineer with the best quality of work hasn't necessarily solved the feature or solved the problem with the feature that they've built. So you need to show it as well. So in our stand-ups, we have a sign-off period at the end of every, every stand-up where uh, engineers who finished a feature come and demonstrate that the feature solves the problem they were looking at. And with the, doing these three things, you then start to build up and maintain trust. Um, I didn't like the idea of delegating when I first started because being an engineer, I wanted to do everything. I felt responsible. I felt ownership for everything. So reading Ken Blanchard's book, The, the One Minute Manager Meets the Monkey, came up with a really good framework and a really good set of rules um, to learn how to, um, how to delegate. Pick your battles. Ooh. So if you remember rightly, um, at the beginning, I said there were four things I gave to this guy off the top of my head. And then I sat down and I wrote about them in order to prepare this presentation. And I realized halfway through trying to write down about how to pick your battles, I'm dreadful at it. I'm still picking battles all the time. And, and the things that um, engineers and team leads disagree about can be really daft. Okay, So changing requirements. I know as a team lead and the experience for the last however many years it is that things change. People change their mind. Change is a, is a fact of life. And some engineers get really upset about the change, especially if they've got to change what they're doing after they started. It's the same with timescales. Different things happen in the business. Um, and some engineers expect the timescales to be, to be fixed or other things not to get in the way. But all sorts of different things um, can cause uh, disagreements in a team. Um, I find that with coding styles, the way we get around that is we write down the coding sty styles and it is a, a living document. So if somebody wants to change the way we do things, they add to the coding styles and then we review it in stand up. And that's the way we do things in the future. It reduces a lot of friction. It's the same with libraries. Oh, sorry. And I really like this quote from um, Ken Blanchard, which is, if you agree with your boss, one of you is not necessary. And while I'd like it if everybody just agreed with me all the time, I think I get bored and redundant pretty soon. Uh, right, avoid saying, do it because I said so. OK, we're senior engineers, even though we're team leads, we should be able to explain sufficiently why we want something done in a particular way. So never, never use do it because I said so. Unless, of course, the business has told you, you have to do it that way. That's the one caveat. Um, and admit when you're wrong. We talk to our engineers because sometimes they have better ideas. And there are three things you can do when an engineer has a better idea. You can double down and make him do it, sorry, make them do it your, their way. Sorry, make them do it your way and say nothing about it. You could just let it slide and let them do it their way. Or you can admit that you're wrong and let them know. And that way it builds the trust and the rapport between you and them going forwards as well. And so if a disagreement is coming your way, ask yourself two things. Is it my battle? OK, if the engineer is upset about what colour a button is, or where it is on the, on the UI, then the chances are that's a discussion they have to have with the designer, not with you. So it's not your battle, so don't fight it. Does it matter? Is it hell you really want to die on? So we have to do some, um, some basic training every year at Haven. Um, it's not particularly relevant to us as engineers, but we have to do it. Um, and I was adamant that this year, my team would be, the, would be the ones who had it all done first. They wouldn't need to be chased, anything like that. But one of my engineers really dug his heels in. He didn't want to do it. He was just going to leave it to the last minute. But that's not what I wanted. So we were at loggerheads until somebody pointed out it wasn't the hill either of us really wanted to die on. So I just let it go and we moved on. So just make sure it's a battle you really do want, do need to, to, um, to have. Um, and it's now the right time. Just look at what it is the disagreement is about. It might be something that will sort itself out in time without the need to discuss it now. So just ask yourself these three things when disagreements come up. And also, it's really important to know how to disagree. I think we've lost the ability to, um, to disagree politely. Um, and also it's difficult, especially in an engineering context, to avoid blame um, and to avoid judgment. And I found this book, Nonviolent Communication, um, really handy for that. In fact, I was at a, a LAWS workshop last year and as an icebreaker after lunch, the trainer said, uh, get out your Amazon accounts and tell us what the last thing you bought was. And this was the last thing I'd bought. It had been at the recommendation of my boss. So he was obviously trying to tell me that I was doing something wrong. Uh, doing the work isn't the only way to add value. This is what I've struggled with the most um, as a team lead because, um, as I was saying earlier, I felt, I felt a, a lot of ownership. I wanted to do the work. I wanted to add that value, fix the problems. But my boss pointed out that there are other things you have to do, like set the expectations, communicating vision, and um, there were three. Isn't three in my notes. Managing stakeholders, setting expectations and communicating visions. None of those are particularly technical, but they're all things that are really important and do add value to the company. Um, and also looking after the health of your systems and your people. 
when you're an engineer, you're a senior engineer, you're often sort of focused on what's in front of you. You're not thinking about the, the wider team around you and you're not thinking about the systems that are in production. So when you move up to team lead, you have to make sure that everything is running smoothly, the team and the systems. And this was suggested to me by John Moore as another team leader at Haven. Um, and I often get to the end of the day and I'm frustrated because it feels like I've done nothing but talk all day and I certainly haven't written any code. But if I've been talking all day, it means I've been adding value and allowing other people to, to do other things. Um, and it's the same with not having written code. There are people who are much better at writing code than I am these days, although I don't normally admit that. Um, so it just means that somebody else is doing the work, so you haven't had to. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, Phil Wiltshire, another team lead at Haven, pointed out that as a team lead you have to be a shit deflector. You have to make sure you keep the things away from the team that stop them doing the work. Because if you think about it, without the team lead, the team can't focus on what they need to do because of the shit they're having to deal with that you haven't dealt with. Um, it, everything will take longer because they have to deal with the shit that you should have dealt with. Um, and it would be more challenging because they don't have your experience and your, your overall vision of what's going on as a team lead. Um, and of course, if, uh, if the team lead isn't looking after the team, then product have to, and nobody wants that, do they? Um, right, retrospective. So um, just remember what a team lead is. A team lead is someone who guides or influences a group of individuals who cooperate and coordinate their efforts to achieve a specific objective. It doesn't say the team lead is someone who achieves the work in spite of the team. And remember to always talk to your team every day. Remember to delegate pick your battles, and doing the work isn't the only way to add value. And I'd just like to leave you with a comment from my boss about what he thought team leading is. And he pointed out that he thought team leading was telling me that I was wrong. So he's certainly very good at that. That was one of the points where you were meant to laugh. Thank you. Uh, finally, are there any questions? Thank you.